No wordy is still going on strong. I have actually finished two of the novellas that I'm planning in my 52 novellas in 52 weeks. So that's a thing, but we'll see how long I can keep this pace going. Lots of stuff going on on today's episode, including the announcement of a new gothic romance anthology that you might want to send your story to. Let's just get into it on today's Fiction Friday episode of Project Shadow. Can you hear me? I have something to say. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie, you might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, and yeah, it's it's been busy, I've been busy, I've written a lot, and I am not going to go into numbers and word counts, at least not right now, and it's not because like I'm embarrassed or anything, I'm, I'm really doing quite well on my goals. <sighs> this is, I guess, a shameless plug point, I did a video over on my... YouTube channel about goals and shame and how people are reacting to the word counts that I've been writing. And so, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really going to be sharing like numbers for a while because I feel awkward about it because I'm me. And of course I feel awkward, but enough about me, like enough about me. Like we're going to talk more about me a little bit later, but right now there's an exciting announcement from an old friend of the show. Hey, Charlie, it's Ems, and I don't know if your listeners know about our submission call. It's Haunts and Hellions. It's a gothic romance anthology, and I want some different stories. I want some cool stories from people that we haven't heard from, writers of color, uh, people in the LGBTQ community. I want some different stuff. You know, traditionally, it's a woman, a damsel in distress, and there's a monster, or the man is the monster. And they fall in love, and what can they do? Because there's this horror around them. But what I'd like to see is different kinds of love stories. You could still have a damsel in distress. It could be a woman still. It could be a man. Maybe the woman saves him. Maybe it's a love story between two of the same sex, and, you know, one saves the other. It doesn't matter. But what we'd like to see is heroes that you don't normally see would be great. Now, it must contain these five things, okay? An overwhelming sense of menace and dread. Inclement weather, so fog, rain, snow, etc. A supernatural horror being or entity. This can be a ghost, a monster, a werewolf, anything like that. It can be a hero or an anti-hero. It could be the savior. Um, it needs to be set in a spooky location. And the time period is 1700 to 1940. Now, all of these guidelines are on our site. Just go to whoreaddicts.net and click on pub calls up at the top and you will be directed to the page where it is. And I hope that I get a lot of different stories. I'm really excited to read these. And the deadline is October 31st, Halloween, 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Get those in. I'm so excited to read them. And maybe you'll be in our book next year. Stay spooky. I am so excited about this. So I mentioned this during our write-in on Wednesday. And a lot of people jumped at it. A lot of people jumped at it. So hopefully... A, there will be a plethora of good stories awaiting you on this. And you know what? I, I'm going to try to throw my hat in the ring. I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I have kind of an idea. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit weird. I don't know. I want to see what I can do because I am so excited about this. So if you haven't checked it out and you're looking to add a little gothic romance to your life, go check out this wonderful opportunity I have to say, I love the anthologies that they do. This, this, this is an amazing, amazing thing. And who doesn't like a good gothic horror? I mean, honestly, I love a good gothic horror. And I've been wanting to write some good gothic romance for a while. And part of me kind of wonders what my Wuthering Heights would be like. I mean, you know, it's going to be all kinds of weird and strange and different, right? So my imagination's on fire, and I hope yours is too. Don't forget that you have until Halloween to make this magical, mysterious terror come to life. Get working on it now, all right?
So I've been working on my submission for Orla Hart's anthology, which is a really exciting thing. It's going to be a YouTube anthology on her channel. And all that she required is that it be somehow about five minutes, whatever that means, five minutes. And so I wrote my story. I have it. I have done some art for the story. I will soon be recording the audio for the story. But I... It really got me thinking, what exactly is a story video? Because this is something that we as indies need to be thinking about, is ways we can put our stories out there. And I'm really excited about the idea of making a video for one of my stories. In fact, I wrote this story specifically to do that. But what is it going to look like? What, what form could that take? Because I am not an animator. I would love to be an animator, but I'm not. So I have been playing around with this idea for a while. And Tail Foundry used to do these story videos that I loved that were basically just them reading the story with more or less a static image. I mean, they did things so that there was motion on the screen, but it wasn't like motion motion. Like it wasn't animated. It was one image. It didn't change. It didn't tell the story. It was related to the story. And it really got me thinking, like, what can we as creators do? And so for someone like me, and be, I, I, I made some art. I loaded up my 3D renderer that I like to use, and I tend to make versions of my characters in there. And since this is a character from the upcoming spate of novellas when they were a kid, I was able to age them down and put them in and do some things and... I made a couple images and I think they look good. I think they look good. And I'm trying to figure out how to place them in and what I want to do. Cause I don't have the money for, you know, really nice Adobe video processing stuff. I don't have motion. I don't have after effects. I, I don't have a access to any of that. And I just wanted to kind of say, I hope, no one is using that as an excuse. You see, we each have our own powers when it comes to creativity. Mine is not animation. Mine is not animation. I, I know this because I tried. I tried really hard. I took classes. I, I did like the whole thing. Like I bought software and this was like years and years ago. And my brain just doesn't work that way. I wish it did. I really wish it did. I, I would love to be making animated videos for, you know, myself. I almost said for YouTube, but I wouldn't be making them for YouTube. Like there's some, some things I would love to animate that I, I just can't do. But I'm going to make something. <laughs> I, I have it kind of blocked out in my brain what it's going to look like. And I am embracing my own limitations. And that's what I'm wanting to encourage you to do is embrace your limitations. Know what it is that you can't do and figure out how to turn that into a superpower. So I can't animate, but there are some things that I can do. So I have made images from various parts of the story and I'm going to be laying them out. I'm going to be using the Kent Burns effect kind of thing to move the camera around on that image. So that it has a sense of motion, hopefully, and do some video transitions between them, you know, stuff like that. And hopefully it'll look good. Hopefully in the end it will look good, but I don't know. And that is the most important thing I think we as creative people need to embrace is this fear. <laughs> fear is such a good thing. Because it means you're stretching yourself. It means you're doing something that you don't feel comfortable with. And embracing that and finding a way to harness it for your own good, that's power. That is power. That's what gives us life as creatives. Because as soon as you let yourself get into a rut, as soon as you let yourself get into a space where you're just doing what you know you're capable of doing. Well, what challenge is there? And we need challenge. We need something to stretch us, to pull us out 
and make us do things. And for some of us, that's just writing a short story or a novel or a poem. Don't think that you have to do something in particular. Do what you want and find ways to get there. In most aspects of life, I understand why people want to avoid fear. I get it. I get it. Trust me. I get it. There are a lot of things that just terrify me that I'm never going to do. And that's all right. But creatively, fear is often a barrier that we put up between us and our goals. Am I afraid that I'm not going to hit my meal wordy goal? Yeah. Am I afraid that I'm not going to get my 52 and 52, especially since I've started talking about doing it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of afraid of that. But if I don't put myself out there, if I don't try, if I don't stretch, if I don't work towards the goals that I'm trying to accomplish, I'm going to stagnate. We are going to stagnate. We are going to get tired of the work that we're doing. And I know what you're saying, Charlie, that's impossible. How are we going to get tired of the things that we're doing? I love what I'm doing. Yeah, I love what I'm doing too. But I can tell you from experience, that the more samey samey it gets, you know, even the exciting things get boring. Because you develop a routine, you figure out, oh, well, if I just do this, that, and the other thing, then it's all good. I'm, I'm on my way. And the more comfortable you get, the less thrill there is, the less exhilaration. Now, I'm not going to say that you're never going to lose the thrill of writing a book. I haven't. I have nine books that are in print. And that doesn't count the four that I did before that, that are uh, just terrible, just completely and utter crap. And yet, here I am, I just finished two novellas, I'm working on some more, and I still have that sheer and utter thrill. I am so excited every time I finish one. And who knows, maybe if I complete my 52 novellas in 52 weeks thing, I, I will have burnt out that part of my brain that feels excited when I finish something. I doubt that that's going to be the case, but who knows? Because then the fear is going to come in. And that's what's going to keep me going. And it sounds like such a strange thing to say, but I, I may have finished two novellas, but they're not out in the world yet. They're not. They haven't been published. They still need to be edited and cleaned up, and I need to get covers done and then put them out into the world. Oh my, yes, they have, they have to go out into the world. They need to be read and seen by other people. Oh my, isn't that a thing? It is, and it's terrifying. It's utterly and completely terrifying. I don't like it. I don't want it to be a thing. And that's where my fear still is. But that is not going to keep me from getting my words written. That's not going to keep me from doing this project. Doing this video for Orla Hart's anthology is terrifying. I'm not good at reading my own stories, even though I want to be podcasting my stuff. I want to be doing a lot more audio books and whatnot. I, I really want that to be a thing. But here I am facing that fear and I'm going to face it. I'm going to push through. And it's not because I'm better than you. It's not because I have found some secret trick to get beyond fear. <laughs> far, far from it. No, the reason I am going to push through this fear is because I am allowing it to motivate me. I know that this feeling is just this sensation of not knowing how everything's going to end. It's the fear, the feeling, the sensation of not understanding anything about what's going to happen next. It's the unknown. It's that terrifying blankness of the unknown. It could go one way and be a tremendous success. It could go another way and be utterly, utterly horrible. But I won't know until I do it. And so I kind of have to do it. And you should too. Now, don't do anything stupid. I, I'm not saying that fear should always be ignored. Sometimes things are stupid and we're afraid of them and we're afraid of them for a good reason. But when it comes to a lot of our creative projects, the thing that we're most afraid of 
is that it might actually work. And I know I don't want it to work because that means I have success and I have to keep doing it. And what if I can't keep doing it? But I'm not going to let that hold me back anymore. I'm going to keep pushing forward. Speaking of people that just won't be held down and you're just pushing forward and doing amazing things, we have a new story from Laura Nettles that I just can't wait to share with you, and I hope you like it. Neighbors by Laura Nettles Mr. and Mrs. Maud were even madder than one who had read the Necronomicon cover to cover, twice. Teacups sang through steam patterns to them, clouds told of ancient cataclysms. Their brains were scrambled in the best of ways, like an omelet sprinkled with the finest of cheeses. But that's not what their neighbors thought. Mr. and Mrs. Evangeline were as sane as one who had never heard of the name Cthulhu. Their lawns were perfectly edged, their flowers pristine, and worthy of every gardening award in Wiltshire, Massachusetts. Upstanding citizens. The day the mods rolled into town riding backwards on a horse and pulled up to number six, removing the for sale sign, the picture-perfect neighborhood took a collective breath. Unfortunately for them, they could not hold it for long. Immediately, strange sounds, smells, and vapors rose from lot number six, driving away the perfectly normal, thank you very much, neighbors and driving down the value of the estates. The new folk were not much better than the mods. One had even built a barn in their backyard. Something had to be done. On October the 24th, Mrs. Evangeline had had enough. She hiked up her skirts and sallied forth past the other houses going to rot, and up the weed-infested walkway to the first and worst offender. The front door somehow loomed, even though it used to be like every other cookie-cutter house on the street. The vapors had warped it, paint was peeling, and a giant hole with a spyglass was cut into the center at child's height. Why on earth is it so close to the ground? thought Mrs. Evangeline. Before she could even knock, the door creaked open, giving her the fright of her 45-year life. Mrs. Maud was on all fours, her knees bent backwards. She was scuttling forward, spider-like, a basket in hand. With a shriek, Mrs. Evangeline ran from the premises. Something has to be done, she thought. But what? An idea struck her. What about the HOA? Surely they are breaking every rule. Mind made up, she made her way over to the new president of the Homeowners Association's house to complain. Nose in the air, the faint whispers of damp and salt reached her nostrils as she rang the bell to Mr. Olmsted's house. He was a younger man who had come from a seaside village a month ago with his cousin. The election for HOA president had been held by mail ballots for some reason, so she had never met him in person. But social pleasantries be damned. She had a complaint to make. Slowly, the water warped door creaked open. In the depths of the shadows, a man stood, face swathed in the darkness, yet his bulging yellow eyes could be seen piercing through to her soul. His pale green lips opened and produced an inhuman sound, something like a kraken would make. In terror, she fled, and her eyes were open, finally noticing the new sign at the opening of the road. Welcome to Lovecraft Lane. <laughs> what is it about all those people from them seaside countries? Oh my goodness. You know, Dagon and his folk, they just need to leave the good people alone. I love that, Laura. That is oddly specific because uh, I'm not going to start telling stories about my time in Pennsylvania, which is not close to the sea at all. Well, like, not really. But there's something about this story that just reminded me of my time in Thorndale. Which, I have to say, if any town in America is going to be the home of spooky and bizarre things, it's going to be Thorndale, Pennsylvania. Because it just sounds like... It sounds like a place that Lovecraft would have written about. And... It was built by the people that Stepford forgot in so many ways. Thank you so much for the story. If you would like to have a story featured on Project Shadow, 
Just record a flash fiction no longer than five minutes and send it to charlie at dashpunk.com. I would love to hear it. So the one thing that I've been thinking about a lot, a lot over the last week is all of the things that I want to get accomplished this year. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because I'm not one who does a lot of planning. Like planning and I are not the best of friends. We're not. I, I like to pretend that I can plan, but I know deep down in my heart that planning and I are not friends. And yet, somehow I'm doing it. I have a lot of dreams and a lot of ambitions, and the biggest one is to help as many of you as I can to avoid the pitfalls and the insanity that I have fallen into over the years when it comes to writing and creativity. And that's why earlier I gave my little pep talk about avoiding the fear and embracing all of the chaos. And that's kind of what I want to talk about again now, because I think so many of us are holding ourselves back in so many ways. Like I see it every day, every day. And when I'm doing the streams and I hear you all and we talk, I can just see the fear and trepidation inside you. Remember craft comes with time. You're not going to be perfect out the gate and you'll discover that as you move forward, as you tell more stories, as you get more in touch with your own voice, a lot of those fears, while they may not go away, you will, will discover exactly how unfounded they are because there's nothing there. There's no there there in the truest sense. So, Embrace your weird. Embrace the things that you want to embrace. Be the creative that you want to be. Look, I've been in a lot of communities over the years and watching what's going on right now in AuthorTube it just hurts my heart. Because there, this doesn't have to be a breakup. This doesn't have to be a division that comes between people. You know? I decided to do creator tube and to embrace that moniker, not because I wanted to leave anybody behind or because I'm not considering myself a part of author tube or writer tube or any of the other online communities. I decided to use that because I want to be embracing more of the different things that I do. And hopefully, hopefully more people will be along for the ride. That's it. I mean, that's, that's all that it is. For me, it was truth in advertisement. If I tell you that this is my author tube channel, you're going to think that all I'm going to be talking about is writing. And so far, kind of, <laughs> I have been putting up episodes of world building Wednesday over there for people to encounter because I get a lot of questions about world building that we've already discussed here on the podcast. And I've been doing original videos about topics that mean things to me. But I also want to be embracing the stories that I want to tell and getting them out into the world. I want to be doing the art and the music and all of those things. And I don't know when I'm going to allow myself to do music. But it's on the horizon. It really, really is. So what do you want to do? You should fill your life with dreams. Not all of them will be fulfilled. And that's okay. Sometimes the best love stories are unrequited. Look, I'm happily married and I've been happily married for a long time. But I had a relationship that went unrequited. Like... There was a lot of flirtation and a lot of maybes along the way. And I still think of it fondly, even though we never actually dated, we never held hands. I don't think we ever told each other how we felt. 
I know I didn't tell the ho them. And I don't even know how they felt about me, if it was anything more than just friends. But there's something pure in that. In that I didn't want to hurt our friendship, and so I just let it linger. Do what is best for you, but have all the dreams that you can have. And run after them. Because you deserve to have them fulfilled. Because if you don't try to make yourself happy, no one else in this world will. Because no one else in this world can. There are so many words that I want to get written. There are so many words that I want to get written. And thank you to everybody who keeps sending me stuff about not burning myself out and not, you know, being too focused on goals and outcomes. Because I'm not. I'm not. Like, I put my numbers into my tracker every night just to see where I'm at. And I'm happy when I'm happy. And I'm sad when I'm sad. And when I have my goals met, I have my goals met. When I don't have my goals met, I don't have my goals met. And I'm not struggling one way or the other because my creativity is my creativity and I have come to embrace that about myself and that's all I want for you. It's been a long, long road for me to get here, to feel comfortable, not necessarily in my skin because sometimes the dysphoria is quite real, but to be comfortable in my life knowing who I am and who I want to be and what I want to be and what I want to be doing. And I don't want you to put off your goals, hopes, and ambitions for some mythical day out there in the future when you may or may not accomplish what you want. I see it every day that I do a live stream in the chat. One day I will. I'm not going to call myself a uh, one day, one day, one day. One day is now. And for those of you who are listening, this may sound like I'm a broken record, but I am. And I'm going to keep saying it until y'all stop saying it. Because you're going to fulfill your dreams only if you pursue them. So do that. And stop pushing it off. Just stop pushing it off. Time goes faster than you think. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, and the app that you're listening to me on allows you to rate it in some way, please do. That helps out a lot. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to hear addressed on the show, down in the show notes, you'll find a link to the voice message system. Keep it short, keep it clean so I can use it on the show. I would love to hear from you. If you have a dollar you can pass my way, while you're down there in the show notes, you'll find a link to listener support my Patreon, and my coffee account for one-time donations. And I know some of you can find it because thank you so much. This episode and many episodes to come is dedicated to the glorious Cat Leo, Cat Mosier. Yes, I'm talking to you. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon. It does mean the world to me. You are such a wonderful person to have in my life, and I am glad that you feel that you can support me in some way. I just hope that I can return the favor to you. If you don't have any money right now or you don't feel like giving, that's perfectly all right. But if you know anybody you think would like anything that I do, please share it with them. That helps out more than you could ever possibly know. All right. I wish this part of the show didn't ha have to happen. Like, it really breaks my heart every time I get to an end of an episode because I'm not going to stop saying it until it doesn't need to be said anymore. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Trans identities are valid. We are. We're real people. And the fact that here we are in 2020 still fighting for anyone in this country to be seen as a real human being just breaks my heart into little pieces. Stay out there, stay proud, stay protesting, keep your voices up in whatever manner you can. And as always, may you have the courage to ride your dreams into reality. 
and don't forget to have the fun. Bye.